afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. With the days getting colder and the leaves off the trees, most of our outdoor gardening activities have ended. But today's guest says there are still some things to be done outside. Plus, he's got some interesting ideas to pass along for gardening indoors. For our monthly garden and landscaping tips, I'm joined by UVM Extension horticulturalist Leonard Perry. Great to see you again. Great to be back, Judy. So what tips and activities are you suggesting for November? Okay, well, let's start indoors. And first thing is a couple of things to do now thinking about the holidays mm -hmm. coming up, Thanksgiving and Christmas. And one of the things that you see often are paper white narcissus. Now these are um, bulbs and you plant, and there's several ways you can go about this. Uh, here is a bulb. This is kind of the traditional way. Um, a lot of people do it. You have a container, fairly mm -hmm. shallow, and um, I've used some white stones here, crushed stones, and you want to just put the bulb here, just kind of nestle it in there a little bit, sticking out the top, give it plenty of room for the roots. You want to put some water in the bottom but don't just fill that to the top so you don't want them sitting in water um, and then you can put a couple more bulbs in here so have three um, again just if the water gets down add just a little bit more uh, fairly cool place for these um, if you can and otherwise they'll start to grow and stretch you want some roots to form first mm -hmm. then as it starts to the top start to come out and grow then you can bring it into a little bit more warmth but again cooler you get up with shorter plants and they won't flop all over the place. I was going to ask you about that. Now, what should you look for in a good bulb? Uh, just a big fat bulb, one that's not uh, uh, rot on the side, one that's very firm. And, and I, these are very nice size bulbs. And yeah, that's one, one way. This is another way that's always fun. Um, you have a uh, jar just for the paper whites. You can see it's got a hollow area. You put the water in, <laughs> then set the bulb in top, and then the roots will go down into the water. So you want the water up just about to the neck there mm -hmm. so it has a little bit of air and then the roots can go out and into that and the top will grow so again same type temperature um, one of the things and if you don't want to use stones you can find these nice little marbles here I've had used these before these are very attractive colorful um, just made for uh, planting mm -hmm. but what I like to do is get these and put them in a pot and, and soil up to about three quarters of the way and then put these bulbs uh, just in the top, again, fairly tight works. Um, the tops pretty much at the rim, and then fill it mostly up uh, with soil. Mm -hmm. uh, give it a bit of water, and but don't overwater it. Just that'll be enough moisture. Maybe once a week, check it every two weeks until they start growing. Um, and, and so then, hopefully for Christmas, you'll have some nice uh, paper white flowers. So it takes some weeks to grow. It takes several weeks, yeah, maybe about six weeks, you figure, mm -hmm. um, to grow. And um, there's a, brought a picture of the flowers that people aren't familiar. They're very uh, fragrant. They're they're white. They're up on stems. Yeah, they're beautiful. So you see here, and, you know, have a nice fragrance that most people like. Now, once again, if you don't want them to get really tall and fall over, what's the best way to do that? Um, cooler temperatures. That's, that's really the key. Out. Yeah, okay. to start out with, you know, maybe 55, low 60s. Um, and then if you bring it in, maybe low 60s is good. If you bring it in. And it's high 60s to 70. They're, they're going to get stretch a bit, get a okay. bit tall. So another one I brought um, that, again, it's time to start thinking about Christmas ahead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of early to do that. But this is amaryllis. And this is a big bulb, so you want a bigger pot. Um, I like a couple things. One about 8 inches across, so it's big enough for the roots for this really big bulb. And um, they uh, and they cost a bit more than those. Those may be a dollar. These may be ten to twelve. But um, these will last for years. So it's a great oh, investment. No it's a great gift. All you do is buy the bulb. You get some potting soil. You know, for pots, don't use garden soil. The other thing about a clay pot, it's heavier because these will really get tall. They'll get maybe uh, two feet high with the flowers on it. You may yeah, need to big. stake those. So even put them in a bigger pot. You know, set this pot in a bigger <laughs> one to keep it from falling over. This is um, one I've actually gotten for uh, mother. In law. I'm going to give it to her on Thanksgiving so it'll hopefully be rooting, starting to grow, and she can watch it grow for Christmas and it'll nice. be bloom. So it's a great gift. They have these uh, flowers. Again, I brought a picture of just an example of amaryllis flower, but they come in many colors. Uh, here's one that's red with some white in it, but they come in solid red like the one I've got, whites, pinks, uh, kind of purpley, and, and just a lot of different colors. So again, a great gift. It's, um, if you don't want to get all ingredients together, you can buy them in a box. Mm -hmm. everything right in it. Yeah, they're kits. The now, can you combine them? 
Um, yeah, you can. If you get a really big pot, you can put, you know, two or three in it. If you want to really get a big, big pot going, <laughs> you know, if you have a big container, you can lug, uh, lug around. But again, these will last for many years. They're, they're a very easy bulb to grow. And now, do and you just keep it in the dirt then after it, when it blooms? Yeah, you just keep it and just treat it as a house plant and oh, then uh, let it kind of go dormant in, in summertime, mm -hmm. lay off in the water a bit, and then as it starts to grow, and foliage may die down, and then in the fall, start watering again. So it really doesn't I take too that. much. Uh, uh, care and again, um, it's funny because I get her uh, mother-in-law some each year, and she's got this whole collection from other people too. But she loves them, you know, watching them come up and oh, see when they're yeah, going to bloom. Yeah, it's fun, you know, in the middle of winter to have such beautiful exactly. Colors. And that's why I like to pot these now. You can buy them already, ready to go, and almost in bloom or in bloom. But I like to start them now, so when you come inside in the fall, you're watching something grow. Still, you still, know? <laughs> that's nice. Now, what else have you got for us? Okay, I uh, brought some uh, house plants here, a couple, <clears throat> again, thinking the holidays. This is a Thanksgiving cactus. Now, it's very similar to Christmas cactus. Uh, basically, only difference is these have little pointy bits on the le edges of leaves mm -hmm. and the Christmas cactus around it, but the flowers are, are very similar, um, very kind of unique flowers, um, very flat leaves. This is a cactus, uh, but it doesn't have any thorns on it. Um, and this is uh, pretty exciting because this was, uh, these are given down by many people from years to years, you know, grandmother, whatever. This was, I'm actually plant sitting for uh, my daughter. Friends <laughs> gave this to her a couple years ago. I didn't give it any special treatments just by a south window, but it doesn't get that much light at night where it is, mm -hmm. and it's starting to form buds, which I'm very excited. You see on the ends, these little buds right. coming out. Uh, it takes about three weeks to form, and then about another three, you see the flower there, very different, and then if we take a a look at uh, some more of those. It's different in the top and bottom, and um, so that's a different <clears throat> uh, shape. And they have ones uh, uh, cut in half here. Got a picture of this, and it's called zygomorphic. That's a good, good word <laughs> there for your uh, trivia. Um, but that shows how the top and bottom are very different. And then another one just shows the difference between the Christmas and the Thanksgiving cactus on the leaves. But um, again, to really get these to flower, they need um, either cool, that cool by fifties. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, for about three weeks at least, or um well, if they do that, the uh, no, light's not particular, but if you can't give them that, then maybe um, darkness from about 8 at night till 6 in the morning, something like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, And this time of year, that should be pretty easy. <laughs> that is easy, and that's why this is blooming, even by the window. I have one downstairs with a light timer and getting the cool in, in both, and it's starting to bud up, too. So, um, again, uh, 50 to 60 for six weeks, or 60 to 70 if it's warmer, um, but give it that dark at night, uh, and that'll get it to bloom. So anyway, that's that's again a, a great one that just lasts from year after year and just a good pass along plant and this is so exciting it's going to be blooming looks <laughs> like for Thanksgiving. So now what if you don't have buds on your plant by now? If you don't, um, no, you can start it probably looking at having this bloom. Just forget the name, what it really <laughs> is. It, it may be a Christmas cactus there and you if go. you don't get around to it or if it's kind of slow, then it may be a January cactus. <laughs> so anyway, it, it should flower given, given those treatments just just a little bit out of sync. Yeah, we've got some foliage plants here too. We do, and I, uh, this is a time of year to think about house plants, and there's just so many good ones out there. This is one of my favorite. It's called a pothos, named after a character in Greek mythology, or uh, devil's ivy sometimes, because it is such a rampant uh, vine. It's like an ivy. It's actually from French, uh, French Polynesian in some of the tropics. It'll actually become kind of invasive. Um, but it is very uh, easy to grow. Um, it's hard to overwater it. It'll take some drought. It uh, really won't wilt too much. Uh, but, and again, it just makes this vine. I've got one, a couple in my office that are just growing. In, in the native, it grows all over uh, trees and just climbs around. Well, that's what's doing in my office. All over bookcases, up the <laughs> wall. I don't know what it's clinging to. It just, it's going everywhere. It looks very tropical. Look in, you may not want to look into that. Um, yeah, exactly. And one of the things is there, uh, usually what you see are some of these variegated. There's ones with yeah. um, golden in it or this white uh, coloration here. And it's got some green. That's the chlorophyll, the green substance that uh, plants used to make energy. Well, if it doesn't have much light, 
Um, like these were in a greenhouse, it had a lot of variegation, but then I brought it home, it's got a lot less light, so it needs more of that chlorophyll, so the leaves t turn out more green on this new foliage. So if you have one, it's variegated, it's turning green, that's why uh, it's not getting enough light. It's still gonna grow fine. The ones in my office don't get that much light, and they don't, they're mainly green, but they have a little variegation in it, so that's fine. But again, so this one, even though it's in a pot kind of compact, will start making a vine and start growing around. And then this is a variety. I wanted to show a couple things with this uh, called lemon lime because it's kind of a chartreuse color. It's mm -hmm. one of the newer ones. And also here it <clears throat> shows how easy they are to root. It shows the roots that uh, actually come out like um, they grow in the trees, um, these aerial roots, and they just look around for water. Uh, here they found it in a jar. So if you have some that are getting too long, I just snipped them off, stuck them in a jar of water. And you've got these a will root. Plant. Then I'll pot them up you know, after a few weeks and they get some more roots on them that they send out there and then you've got a whole new plant. Uh, now know. there are a lot of health benefits too to having plants indoors. There are, there are, and, uh, and that's a good point Judy because these uh, actually there was a study done back in the 1980s uh, by NASA with uh, Dr. Uh, Wolverton and looking at a lot of these house plants that are called clean air plants mm -hmm. that actually help take pollutants out of the air indoors like benzene formaldehyde, uh, things like car fumes from an attached uh, garage perhaps, uh, car Carpet, new carpet, you know, the fumes that gives off. This is one of those clean air plants, so this helps purify the air. So a lot of people, there's a list of those have on my website, I'll give it the end too, an article on those. But, and other things that plants do too, just having plants indoors, it, it, whether office or home, has a lot of benefits too. So again, pothos or devil's ivy is just a great uh, beginner plant. Again, you can see it'll grow in water, it'll grow in soil. Yeah, they're it can kind of dry out, and it, it's just a real easy one. I highly recommend. Excellent. And now also to um we talk about indoors, but what about outdoors? You brought a couple of items to show us for right. outdoors. First, I wanted to bring um, some and <clears throat> show these tree guards. Um, these are what you put around a tree trunk in the um, this time of year to keep mice and other and rabbits and things from chewing the bark. Uh, the bark is what transmits the uh, nutrients and water up and down. They chew that; it's basically cutting that off. The tree dies. Two years ago, I had a crab apple, several crab apples. It's a severe winter, um, they chew that bark around. Now the mice are under the snow, they they're come in. They're under the snow, they come in, and they, they gotta eat, they're, they're starving, and so they, they just start chewing on that bark, and then it girdles the tree. They actually live for a year, but it's kinda like the last gasp. Those crab apples said, fine, I've gotta put out flowers and fruit, because I'm dying, and sure enough, this spring they were dead. Oh dear. So just because I didn't get around to putting these tree guards on. Before so the snow if you have, especially new uh, young plants you put in this year, or mm -hmm. several years, you know, just been in for a few years, the bark is thin. Um, you can buy these and it's very easy. You can just open them up, yep. put it around and fasten them with a twist tie. This yep. is nice because also another thing that the uh, bark gets, the new bark, is sun scald. That sun in the winter, the bark's cold, the sun hits it, it splits the cells open and that can cause cracks and disease. That's this you just fun. open it up and, and slide it around and that's white. It reflects the sun. The nice thing about these, they let air in too. Uh, one of the older uh, methods is this tree wrap that you put around, you just wrap it with that, but of mm -hmm. course that's tight, it's a tree, you know, you have to take it off each spring, because uh, insects and so forth can get in that too. Um, and then if you don't have those, just simple hardware cloth cut and put twist make ties and work too, but up to the lower branches, um, make sure it's high enough so the, you know, the trees protect critters the if they're in the, walking on the snow don't, don't eat the bark. Okay, very good. Well, and then speaking of critters who we want to feed, we want to feed the birds, and um, a good bird feeder, and this is one I found that's nice to replace one that's cheaper. It has several nice features. One of the things, you want to keep them clean, so you want a way to get in there. This one, you just pull out this, you know, little bit here, take the bottom off, oh, and you huge. can clean it. Yeah. That is just so easy. So um, there are brushes you can get to, um, and I've got uh, one of those I brought, just a, you know, just kind of a brush like this that you can just put down the top if it doesn't have these baffles, but the thing I like about this one is it has these baffles here. So as you pour in seeds, some goes through, but it doesn't all settle on the bottom. So um, oh, you have seeds idea. at each level, so you continuously have birds at each level. Um, and it's very you know rugged, so that'll last too well outdoors. Designed. So yeah.
Now you also have some other cold weather activities and house plant ideas on your website as well. I do, and um, they're on Perry's Perennial pages, uh, perrysperennials.info or .com. I've got many articles. Um, I do these monthly tips with Charlie Nardozzi, um, and so there's many other ideas each month, as well as uh, more in-depth articles on these and more topics, as well as upcoming tours. I hope to have this next year. Excellent. Well, thanks a lot for coming in and bringing your plants. Yeah, thanks. That's our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.